Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your blessings in so many different ways. We thank you for the little one we're just dedicating. We thank you for that blessing. We thank you, Lord, for the good rain we had this past week. We thank you for all the blessings and answers of prayer that you've been blessing us with. We thank you especially for your presence and your love and for your word. And as we look into the word, may it be a fresh word for our lives today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Like the start of a story that was once told about this church service, this guy gets up in the middle of the sermon and walks out. His wife is totally, totally embarrassed. And after the service, she goes up to the pastor and says, I just want to apologize for my husband. I want to encourage you. It's not for what you said in your sermon. But he's had sort of a problem all his life since he's really young. When he falls asleep, sometimes he sleepwalks. <laughs> so, so much for encouragement. Today we're going to talk about encouragement. Uh, a few weeks ago we talked about uh, a different thing on uh, taming your tongue. And this goes under the same category of how to tame our tongues. Um, I think one of the most important keys of being able to tame your tongue is to learn to encourage one another. Encouragement is so much needed today because there's so much discouragement and despair everywhere. So God calls us to be encouragers. So we got a Gopi feast, so during the Gopi feast today, encourage one another what good food that was, okay? Even if it isn't, no, 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 don't lie. <laughs> The thing is that sometimes we get so critical of people and so uh, condemning of people that uh, we don't, we fail to really encourage. And I don't know about you, but I know I need encouragement and everybody I've ever talked to needs encouragement. We need to be built up. So that's what I'd like to talk about today a little bit. Number one, if you have an outline, it says God calls us to encourage one another. This comes from... 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, the 11th verse. Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica and said, So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Encourage one, each other and build each other up. Like I said, there's so much discouragement today that we need this encouragement. We need to get together and encourage one another. Someone said, you're either part of the building crew or the wrecking crew when you come to church. In other words, you're building people up or you're tearing them down. Like I say, there's a lot of encouragement that needed today. And uh, there's a lot of fault finding needed today. There's a lot of negative stuff. You watch the news and stuff like that. It's so much negative, negative, negative. Wherever you go, it's negative. And we get just tore down. We need to be built up. We need to be encouraged. And guess what? That's part of what God calls us as children of God to do, to build one another up and to encourage one another. Point number two is, we meet together to be encouraged. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, uh, one of my favorite verses, verse 25, let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of the Lord is coming closer. In other words, as the end of time comes, as Jesus is coming back closer and closer, it says, don't neglect meeting together. And why? To build one another up, to encourage one another. Now, encourage is the opposite of discourage. Okay? It comes from the root word courage. Discourage, take courage away from someone. Encourage, put courage back into somebody. So that's what you're doing when you're encouraging somebody. You're putting courage back into them. You're helping build them up. Now, sometimes uh, that doesn't always happen. Uh, I remember Cal Coolidge once said that uh, he wrote this in his diary and someone was reading it several years later. He said, I went to church today and when I came home, I was not uh, depressed. Now, I thought that was very interesting 
Uh, I went to church today, and when I came home, I was not depressed. He put that in his diary. In other words, he must have been depressed most of the time when he came home from church. That should not be, okay? Uh, I love Kel Cruz. I think he's the guy that said he'd been to church and his wife uh, didn't go that Sunday, and he says, uh, what did the preacher preach on? Now, he's a man of few words. Sin? Well, what did he say about it? He was against it. <laughs> And so he was a man of few words. He did once say, we don't need bigger government, we need more religion. So, that, uh, so that's just a few quotes from uh, Cal Coolidge that I, I've always liked. Anyway, when we get together, we shouldn't go away depressed, we should go away excited and build up and strengthened and drawn closer to Jesus Christ. That's my aim on a Sunday morning. I may not always achieve it, but that is my aim. I want to see you go home encouraged and strengthened. Point number three, encouragement must be balanced with correction. Encouragement must be balanced with correction. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy, the fourth chapter of the second letter, he says, patiently correct, Rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching. Now, Timothy's a young pastor. He's the head of the church. Paul's left him in charge. And so he tells him, patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage. Part of what Paul tells him to do is to encourage. But notice also, patiently correct and rebuke. So encouragement must be balanced, encouragement must be balanced with correction. Uh, I get a little troubled with some of my pastor friends that uh, say we only are to encourage. We're only to encourage and never discourage people or you might lose people. I know there's some teaching out there like that and they very seldom are preaching against sin because uh, you might lose somebody. Well, I know we lost people over the years when I mentioned the sin, the sin or that sin. And some people say, oh, he's preaching against me. <laughs> um, I mean, I even know you're in that accident, okay? But, uh, you know, we need to take a stand. We need to balance of this. Remember a story that happened down south? This preacher was a preaching against sin. And he got preaching against all those drunks. And there's a lady sitting in the front row. She just, uh, amen, brother, preach it, preach it. He said, and then... Um, Get a hold of those people that are shacking up together. She'd say, preach it, brother, preach it. And then he said, uh, get a hold of those people that are gambling all the time. She said, preach it, brother, preach it. Then he says, and get a hold of those people that smoke cigars. And she said, oh, now you've got meddling. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is that, you know, we're okay when people talk about other people's sins, but something happens to hit us. It's not always okay. Anyway, Paul tells Timothy, hey, Timothy, patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage. We need a balance of both things, in encouraging and correcting and rebuking uh, your people with good teaching. You only encourage, it's easy to get off in the heresy if all you do is encourage and encourage. On the other hand, it's just as bad and just as dangerous. All you do is uh, run people down, fault finding, uh, berating them, and condemning them for things that they're doing. We need both. Paul writes to Timothy to be sure to that. Point number four. Joseph of Cyprus is a great example of encouragement. Do you may remember Joseph of Cyprus? But the best in examples of encouragement in the Bible, and you don't remember that? That's because the disciples changed his name. We know him as Barnabas. Because Barnabas means son of encouragement. Acts, the fourth chapter, down in the 36th verse, it says, talking about the sharing possessions with everybody and uh, encouraging one another. And, for instance, there was Joseph, the one of the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold the field he owned and bought, brought the money 
to the apostles. See, they changed his name. His name was Joseph originally. But no one ever knows him as Joseph. They know him as Barnabas because Barnabas means son of encouragement. He was such an encourager that the disciples changed his name. I don't know about you, but I think we need a lot more Barnabases around. People that will honestly and sincerely encourage people. Not people just uh, try to flatter people. That's, that's, you know, when you're flattering people, you're doing it to get something from them. Encouragement is building them up because you really want to see them grow and strengthen and bless. So be an encourager. Now, uh, Joseph, or Barnabas, uh, took hold of Paul after Paul became a Christian. The disciples in Jerusalem were scared to death of him because he was trying to kill everybody off before he became a Christian. And that's why he went to Damascus where he had a run in with the Lord, okay? And he became a Christian. He came back and no one wanted to be around him. No one was around him. They're all scared of him. And so, uh, what happened was that uh, Barnabas went and talked to him and said, this guy's legitimate. He takes him to the disciples and says, you know, this guy is legitimate. He is a true Christian. And so they accept him. Also, on the first missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas went by the second missionary journey. Paul and Barnabas had a disagreement whether to take the long mark. And uh, he said, nope, I'm not taking a long mark. Uh, because uh, he left us the first time. Barnabas said, I'll take him then. See, all he's out there encouraging people. Like say, we need more people like that to be encouragers, okay? Point number four, Paul was also an encourager. Mark, Acts 16, chapter 40, this verse says, Paul and Silas met with the believers and encouraged them. Chapter 20, verse two, he encouraged them. 27, 36. Then everyone was encouraged when they heard what Paul had to say. Now, Paul all of a sudden becomes an encourager. I wonder if he kind of learned that from uh, Barnabas himself. You know, when you're encouraged, when you're an encourager and start encouraging other people, that's catching. That's catching. In other words, what we sow, we often reap, but also when we saw other people say, hey, that, I, I like that. And you start doing the same thing. Paul started encouraging people too. Point number six, there's a ministry of encouragement. Now what we're talking so much about is this, it's all encouraging, but there is a real ministry of encouragement. Romans the 12 chapter, the eighth verse says, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Philip says, if your gift is in stimulating the, the faith in others, do it. Some people have a special gift of encouragement. You, you like to be around those people. They're always encouraging, always building up, always joyful, always in, in, walking in victory. That's a special gift. Now, some people are given that gift, not everybody, but encouragement is something every single one of us can do and need to be doing. Point number seven is simply this. The Holy Spirit is an encourager. John, the 14th chapter, the 16th verse. I'll ask the Father and he'll give you another advocate who will never leave you. The word advocate there is translated comforter in other places, counselor in other places, or in other places, encourager. That word paraclete is in Greek. Can we translate in any one of those ways? And I like the word encourager. In other words, what it's saying here. Jesus was an encourager, and the Holy Spirit's an encourager. And so, um, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another encourager who will never leave you. That's the Holy Spirit. He's an encourager. He will never leave you. And a lot of people say, well, I've never really been encouraged by the Holy Spirit. I bet you have, if you really stop to think about it. You get the word of God sometimes, and all of a sudden, something pops up. What is that? That's a word of encouragement. Maybe it's a word of conviction. But a lot of times it's a word of encouragement. You draw near to Jesus, he will encourage you. Let me give you an illustration, and some of you have heard me share some of this before. I was under a pastor one time, a good pastor, learned a lot from him, but he was an uh, old-time Marine, 
before he became a pastor. And he wanted everything done just right and everything by the book and bang, bang, bang. And like I said, I learned a lot from him. I enjoyed working under him most of the time. But one time he ended up, uh, <laughs> uh, well, back up just a minute. I always made it to the church before anybody else did in this church. I'd get there early in the morning, come up to the altar, and spend time with the Lord. But one time I was up at the altar, just spending time with the Lord and worshiping him, just praying about the day, and the Lord says, I really appreciate the work you're doing here. I thought, well, that's really nice. Uh, so I had no idea what was about to happen that day. Uh, my senior pastor that I was under came about 9 o'clock. He said, Wayne, I'd like to talk to you. He had a big, uh, one of these uh, legal pads, these big yellow ones, and a uh, lot of scribbling on it. He said, these are the things I don't like about what you're doing. I had no clue. He was not a communicator, but when things got built up, then he just let it all hang out. Well, that's what he was doing to me that day. Like I said, I learned a lot from him. I enjoyed it. But sometimes he didn't, you know, if he would have told me as it went over, this is building up for weeks and maybe months. And all of a sudden, he just gave it. So he was reading one thing right after another down the list, and all I could think of was Jesus saying, I appreciate what you've been doing here. I appreciate what you've been doing here. I don't remember a whole lot what he said. I kind of maybe turned off because I, I'm sure what he said, he had some good reasons for it. And uh, some of the stuff I, I agree, I remember some of it, and he was right on it, okay? But the thing is that the Holy Spirit had told me beforehand, had prepared me beforehand, he was an encourager, the Holy Spirit was an encourager, and he was telling me, I appreciate what you've done here. Your senior pastor maybe doesn't totally appreciate it, but I do appreciate it. That's why I'm just saying here, you know, get to know the Lord. Get to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Spend time with him. He's an encourager. We all need encouraging. Okay? Be an encourager. Walk out. Tell other people uh, something good about them. Uh, make a habit of encouraging people and building them up. But we all need encouragement. And one of the best encouragers that I know is the Holy Spirit himself. Spend time with him. Spend time in the word. And he'll talk to you. He'll share things with you. He'll challenge you. He'll speak to you through your heart and say what you need to hear. It may not always be encouraging. It may be convicting. But even in the conviction, there's always a, a real element of love and concern. Because the only reason he can convict us is because he wants to see us live the fulfilled life that he calls us to live. So what I share today, to encourage you to do today, set some time alone to be with the Lord. Surrender to him and say, Lord, I need to hear a word from you. I need some encouragement today. I've got some things I'm battling. I've I got some sickness that I just can't seem to get free of. i got some kids that are rebellious. i got some financial problems. i got problems with my neighbors. <laughs> With my vehicle, well, you know, you can break down line. There's, a, there's so much in this life, because we live in a fallen world that will discourage you. Spend time with Jesus, and he will encourage you. He'll build you up. But then also, walk it out. Encourage others. Build each other up. You know, you don't need to tell them all the things they're doing wrong every time, <laughs> okay? Build one another up. Why? Because there's so many people around to tear you down. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we get alone with you and spend time with you and with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and just be able to draw from you. Your wisdom, your guidance, your direction, your love, your compassion for us, the encouragement that you have for us, that we are your children, that you love us very much, you have good plans for us. But then, Lord, fill us so full of your Holy Spirit that we'll be looking for people around us to bless, to encourage, to strengthen, to strengthen in their faith, help them to grow closer to you, grow stronger in you. Lord, just bless each one, Lord, 
each and every uh, one here today. Encourage us all that we might be encouragers because you are an encourager. In Jesus' name.